Hi, I just wanted to show you quickly how to uh, mark up your photos in two-point perspective just so that you can help you uh, do your drawings in two-point perspective. Um, I have a couple of photos in here that maybe aren't exactly what you're going to be showing, but just to give you an idea of how that works. Uh, this is in Photoshop, and this is just showing the corner of a room in a gallery. Um, just to show you uh, an interior perspective, two-point perspective. Uh, if you focus on the, or if you center the corner of the room, you'll see that you have clearly have, you know, two uh, vanishing points, and I'll point out how to, how to identify that. Um, if I go over to my tools here, and I go over to the shapes, let's see, uh, actually, you're, here's, I have the line tool, you may have the rectangle tool, which is the default, you may have this as like this, you know, sometimes it's set for, for a single column or double column. So I'll go to my tool and I'll go on line tool and then I can select a color. I have currently black selected up here. I can click on that and I'll, I'll pick a color like red just so that it's really obvious. Uh, and of course I can pick the line weight two pixel or four pixel or whatever. Let's make it thick. Let's make it four pixel. Okay, and you may have it set at a different thing. Just put PX for pixel. Uh, you can also put arrows on it if you want. Well, maybe I'll do that. And I have arrowhead set to end. And I did that by selecting my tool there and selecting that. Okay, I have it just at the end, not at the start. Uh, and you have other settings there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw from where it starts to where it ends. And it keeps, I'm going to go past there. It's going to go off, my vanishing point is going to go off the edge of my drawing or my photo. I'm just going to have it like that. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the lowest one, which is here. And you can see that somewhere way over to here somewhere would be the actual vanishing point. So that's one. Now I'm going to do the opposite direction, which will go this way. And you see they cross over each other when you're looking at a corner inside a room, if you're looking at walls. It's different with objects, and I'll show you another example of that. Okay, and now you'll also notice that the pictures, the frames, also follow that same vanishing point. The angles are all going to be different because they are all different, uh, you know, they're all in different positions. But the, the, the eye line will be right where my, my center of my focus is, which is going to be right about there. So that's, the, that's going to be the horizon line. Okay, if I hold the shift key, that'll make a nice parallel line. Now it gets a little confusing here, so maybe I'll change the colors. Now over here you'll see in my layers panel, now you may not have that, you can get that easily by going to view, uh, show, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, it's not under view, show, where is it? Window, layers, make sure that's selected, layers. If that's unselected you won't see these over here. Okay, so let's see, which one am I on? I'll click on my move tool, and that's this one, that's this shape, whoops, is that this shape? Yep, that's this shape here. If I double click on that color, let's make that one blue, okay? <clears throat> and now let's make the other ones going in the other directions a different color. Uh, is that this one? Yeah, no, uh, it's hard to see which one is which here. Okay, yeah, let's make these green. Okay, and the other one, uh, oops, I'll make that one green, and I'll make this one green, and I'll make this one green. Okay, now you can see the two different directions. Okay, now obviously I could make this one for red there. That gives you a sense of how two-point perspective works on the interior of a room. Now let's also look at one that's more like what you're going to be showing. If this is the interior of a room, you'll see that uh, you ha I have a couple different angles with my camera here. I'm showing this up close, uh, but I think it's better if I lower my, my horizon line. Right now I have my horizon line at eye level as I'm standing up when I took the photo. Here I lowered it down a little bit so I could see a little more of that room, or that corner of that table. And my horizon line, instead of being up here, will be more like down here. So then let's, let's mark this one up. 
Okay, so let's see if we can then do the same thing here with just one of the objects. Let's use this table, since this table is really easy to see in two-point perspective. Now, also understand that uh, if you want the perspective to match, or the vanishing points to match other things in the room, they have to be parallel to each other. And as it is, they pretty much are. In other words, this table, this edge of the table here is parallel to this wall, and same with this table here, and this object here, this uh, uh, chest, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so they will match, and of course they're perpendicular. That's a right angle here. Sometimes people have rooms where they're on a you know not a, a 90 degree angle, so that's something you also have to be aware of. Um, I'm also going to quickly change my line tool. I think four pixels is too small. Let's make it up to 10 pixels so we can see that line a little better. Okay, so uh, now it's real easy with with a table because you know you can really clearly see the uh, the edges. Now something like a couch, you're going to have to sort of draw a box around it to be able to see, you know, how that how those lines will be, how those uh, perspective lines. And by the way, these perspective lines are called orthogonals. Okay, so that's the two uh, ends of the table. Now I'm going to um, click on that and there. Okay, now I'm going to do another one, and this time I'm going to make those a different color just for fun. Make it a little easier to see. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of guess where that goes, someplace like that. And about there. And you'll see that I'm almost going to be able to see the vanishing points on the actual paper. Not quite. Whoops. Let's say there. So we know that the, the eye line in this case, again, because I'm, I'm not actually standing straight up, I'm kind of kneeling a little bit. So my vanishing point will hit on a horizon line somewhere around here. Um, I'll make a new line for that, and I'll make that, let's see, I'll make that green, like that. Okay, so I'm going to guess it's something like this, more or less. Okay, now, again, when you're drawing, you're not going to necessarily be able to put the points on the actual paper. You kind of just have to estimate where that's going to be. Uh, it may help, though, to put your horizon line, just so you have a sense of where that is. Um, now, when you actually go to draw this, uh, what you're going to do, you may find the angles to be slightly different because the, the angle of the lens may be more, a little more distorted, but you'll get a general sense of you know, the clock method. So in other words, I can see that this is not a parallel line to this. They're both different angles. I can see that if I use the clock method, you know, like this would be 3 o'clock, this would be 12 o'clock, so it's about 2 o'clock, something like that. And so then the other ones, obviously, uh, this one here would be like 2.30. Let's say this is like 1.30 and this is 2.30, something like that. This one's almost straight across, but not quite. So you'd say this is not quite what I would call 9 o'clock. It's like 9.30. This one's like 9.45. You'll see they're very similar, but there is a slight difference. Usually what I do is I pick the most obvious angle, like the steepest angle, which would be this one, and then I just flatten it out a little bit when I make this one here. You know, so I would maybe do this one and this one first. And then I would do, when I did this one, I would kind of, you know, just move it, flatten it out a little bit to, to be a little less than this one. And then for this one here, I would flatten it out a little bit from this one. Uh, and remember, again, you're, you're not going to see as much of this surface as you think you are. You know, students tend to do the, you know, make these lines like this you know, and this, and that would not be enough of a two-point perspective. Uh, so, get rid of those, whoops. Um, so hopefully that helps you, and again, you'll see how that follows then with the other lines in the room. Uh, you know, anything going back into this direction would, would also be like this wall here. Let's uh, get a new, whoops, let's get a new uh, line there. Uh, do this. First, now you have to select the move tool, otherwise you're still selecting one of your lines and you'll end up changing the color of the line. So let's see, uh, let's make a, um, this one here. Now this one is going to be somewhere, as you can see, somewhere between, the angle is going to be somewhere between this one and this one, the two blue lines, because it's between them. Now obviously when I go up to the top of the room, it's going to be pointing down towards 
the same vanishing point. Obviously all of these uh, lines here coming from this side going back to this way will have the same vanishing point on this horizon line. Uh, maybe it would be easier if I change these colors to blue. I can actually do that by just doing this, right? Uh, oops, no, I guess not. Uh, and then I can, yeah, now I can do it. Uh, I'll just do this. That makes that a little easier, I suppose. Okay. Uh, so, and obviously that would include your uh, ceiling, which is way up here, goes all the way down. Oops, let's try to keep that right. Oops, I should make that also blue. Oops, why is that not working? Okay, uh, so now you have a pretty good sense of how that works, and obviously do the same thing with things going in this direction. You know, the red ones then obviously the ceiling line would follow that. And you'll notice it's the same on, on this object here. Uh, maybe for laughs here, I'll do that. I'll make this red, and I will draw those lines too. I can, we can draw this line here. Oh boy, why is it not giving me red? I don't know why that's not doing it. Oh, because I'm up here. I want to make that red. It can be a little confusing sometimes, these lines. Which one you have to change the color. There we go. Um, make that more like that. Okay. Uh, and obviously the ceiling line here. So again, it's really just two directions. Whether the thing is going back into space like the wall or the table, you know, they're the foreground or background objects, uh, you know, they're still going to have those same two vanishing points. And again, this is assuming they're all parallel to each other. You know, I can do this one too here. Can't quite see the ed edge of that, but you know, it's the same idea. You can see they're all pointing to that same basic point. Again, you may not get them to line up exactly to the point because you can't see the point on your paper, but you get a general sense of how that works. And remember now, you're working on the photo, you're just trying to understand where those uh, vanishing points are and how those angles are working. When you're actually doing your drawing, you may not have all of these lines here, although it can help to have at least some of them. I mean, I know it can get confusing when you're trying to do your proportional measuring and your sighting, but just this really is just to give you an idea of where things are supposed to be, so that when you start drawing, you don't end up with those flat rectangular shapes, which you don't see. Remember, too, that when you're, when you're translating three-dimensional space into two-dimensional paper uh, or picture plane, uh, really the, the most important thing is you close one eye, because when you're looking at it with two eyes, that's binocular vision, and you actually see it in three dimensions. But on paper, it's a flat surface, and your camera is, has only one eye. And that's how you sort of translate and flatten uh, the three-dimensional world into a two-dimensional representation of it. So a lot of times we have this confusion that, well, I want it to look 3D. Well, actually, to make it look 3D, you have to make it look 2D. I know that's a little confusing, but the idea is that you're, you're flattening... Uh, what you see in three dimensions into a two-dimensional representation, which a camera does automatically for us. So for us to have that kind of accuracy, we need to make ourselves like a camera. And that's why we close one eye so that we can really see those shapes. And remember, too, you know, the top surface of, uh, you know, like a table or, uh, you know, one of a chest or something like that, is not going to be a rectangle with parallel lines. It's going to be a diamond shape, and none of the lines are going to be parallel to each other. That's when they're in two-point perspective like this. Okay, so hopefully this little tutorial helps you to understand two-point perspective a little bit better so that when you're working in your drawings, you'll be able to figure it out. Okay?